Hi guys, this is Jeanette with Good Astrology Cover, and this is your daily horoscope and energy reading for Saturday, the 29th. And I have a really big day to tell you about because it is a full moon that is a super moon. And what does that mean? Well, that means the full moon is closer to the earth and in direct alignment with the earth, which means that it has the power of three full moons. Now, for all of you guys that understand the power of a full moon, you know that full moons usually mean endings and accumulations and it usually represents some sort of closure on a particular issue that you are having that is emotion based. The moon represent in well represents in astrology emotions. And so sorry. It's morning. He wants my attention. So he's getting insistent. <laughs> Anyhow, so when this happens, um, as you and I have been going along this journey for this week, we're starting to understand that there is a lot being asked of us in our unconscious realms, making our unconscious realms our conscious realms. And for some of us, that can be very hard to actually face where our delusions lie. And so that is when we have been having some of these ego struggles. And I want to bring up something that I, I usually don't because I don't believe in mundane astrology or I don't like to talk about it because it's just, I don't like predictive astrology that disempowers people. I am all about finding the highest vibration. And so if you have, I just find that mundane astrology always predicts eminent endings and catastrophes. And, and I just don't go there because I can't mentally deal with it. A and B, I think it's really negative and lowers all of our vibrations. But, you know, we had that gentleman that just went and killed the news anchor and the cameraman um what two days ago when I'm making this video and um you know I immediately thought of he got caught up in his ego and he created an illusion around that everybody was after him because of his race when his when his ego was broke he had to make logic of why these things were happening to his ego the ways that he was defining himself why he could not get ahead why he could not overcome these things and so he categorized it lowered his vibration and really became aries based um, and and uranium based in the, in the lower vibration and decided to hold people accountable using the Libra energy in a way that was at a lower vibration. So he went and he attacked who he thought was his enemy and he became aggressive and he became, he, he really defined what I was talking about when you use your predisposed south node wiring when you let it lower your vibration and you fall back on it and when you start to accumulate all the data which all of us are we're starting to look at all of these unconscious fears right and we're starting to add them all up and for him he added them all up into the fact that he felt that it was a racial um, definition of why he was where he was. Now, I don't know his journey and I don't know what all he went through, but I knew, do know that two people are dead because he decided to stand up for a cause by doing the exact thing that he was, tr that he was standing up against. So in his head, he saw people defining him as a black man, and so he, in turn, held them accountable and and went and killed two white people. I don't understand. If you're trying to make a point and if you're trying to define an injustice, why you go out 
and do the same injustice that is being done to your race or to you. It, it makes no logical sense to me. So this is where this, if, if he had tapped into the Libran energy, try to find some balance and some peace. Hold people accountable, yes, but hold them accountable in representing the higher vibration and the higher self and leading by example. That's when this, all of that situation could have turned out with, with a much better outcome. I, I immediately thought of, you know, Pluto and Capricorn squaring off with Uranus and Aries and we've got fear and we've got ego and we've got to do something about it. And, we, and he got aggressive and he terminated what he thought was the threat to his ego. This is super important to understand because as many of us are redefining our egos, we are digging into our unconscious fears. And when that happens, we are removing the delusion. And when that happens, that creates ego and that creates our need to persevere and to overcome it. And we could get confused on how to do that if we are not working in our north node, if we are not working in our infinite peace and balance, trying to look at both sides and weigh them. Say he was being attacked because he was a black man and it was a black issue. Let's say that. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Does it make it better to go and kill white people to get your point across it and start a racial war. I mean, how does violence solve any of the issues that he was trying to stand up against in his mind, in his, what he was trying to do? Making rationality out of something that was an irrational act is very interesting for me, and it's something that I do. But I also like to look at the energies that were at play when he did this. And I, I think that he was working in a really low vibration of all this energy. So I really want to talk about elevating our awareness and elevating our vibration so we can get the best out of all of this ego dying energy because it's a it's a it's a very high energy time it, there's a lot going on with you energetically and we need to find a way that when our ego is dying that we can stay tapped into potential progression ascension um flourishing um, rebirth, transformation. These are all the key words that we want to focus on. We don't want to focus on where our ego is dying, where we're losing power, because then we do terrible, irrational things with that in hopes to have some sort of power and control over the ego death. So I really, so let's talk about all of the positive energy, we're going to stay away from the negative energy and the vi lower vibrations of what is going on right now, because I really think a positive message needs to start going out there in media and in social networking that really empowers us through a, a, a really confusing time. So let's start out. Now, during this particular full moon, now, I always say some of us feel energy about a week before. If you're really in tune with energy and you're really in tune with when it transfers into another energy source, we actually feel it about a week before. So we feel the buildup and the peak happens on the day of the full moon. And then, and I think probably one day before and one day after, like the three-day window. And then about a week after that, we start to feel the ramifications of that moon. We start to feel the emotional letdown. So we have this incredible buildup on a super moon. And remember, this is three times the normal buildup, right? This is three times the normal full moon emotional aspects. And so this is a powerful emotional awakening then we get the peak where we just feel, whoa, like a clarity, like an, like a, like an aha moment. We feel like, 
you know, we finally get it and then we get the come down from it and that is when we actually feel the emotional ramification. This is a big moon, guys. So I don't want you to get lost in the energies that are at play. So that's why I'm making this special, special, and it's going to be a long one because we're going to, I'm going to raw, raw this out for you because we have gorgeous energies. So let's talk about this. We've got the sun in Virgo and Jupiter in Virgo, both in conjunct. So they're both working side by side. This is taking your mind and it is elevating it. It's expanding it. It is making you look at everything from a whole different perspective. It really wants to expand you in a way that it promotes positive routine. It promotes awareness. It promotes the fact that you need to take a look at your life and expand exponentially your potential, okay? And to do that, we need to, at first, when it's in this zero degrees, when it's in this lower degree mark, this expansion can feel very, very um, alarming. It can feel, it can start to evoke fear, panic. It can make ascension symptoms very heightened right now. So if any of you guys are feeling those things, you're on target. You're on track. You are being awakened. You are special. You are part of the selected and the chosen ones that get to be focused on for the next year and set up powerful routines. And I guarantee you, if you just let the process happen, a year from now, you're not going to be the same person and it's going to be for the better. Jupiter is a benefic planet. It expands our potential. But before that, it awakens us. It's the great awakener. Okay? It is opposing the moon in Pisces and Neptune in Pisces, both conjunct, very close degrees. They are about two degrees apart. So the moon in Pisces it is a very, it's a very deep moon. This is the moon that rules, um, Pisces is the energy that rules the 12th house. So this is your unconscious realms. So you've got the great awakener and you've got it paired up, you know, opposing the moon. Now we can lose it, right? We can go off like that guy did and we can let our emotions run away with us and we can escape and we can and, and we can do ego based things to to help us cope with what we're feeling this expansion this need to this this pull and this this re-identifying our egos and we can let it take us down and we can take people down with us that can absolutely happen but why why would we allow that to be where our energy goes when we can take the two energies that are here, right? Because that would be flat out opposition and you guys would be in the lower vibration of that energy. Or you could take the two energies that are here and you can make them come here and you can you can have it expand. It can be an, an expansive spiritual awakening. It can expand where your illusion lies, where you're sleeping, in your unconscious realms, where you have allowed routine, negative routines to um, mandate the way that you cope. It's The awakening planet is not here to crack us. It's just to make us aware of where we fall, where our ego falls, right? And it is, it wants to break us out of the um, delusion that we have created in our minds. So knowing where Neptune is in your natal chart, make that a point with this moon. You need to figure out where you can have illusion. For me, Neptune is in my fifth house. So in creativity and in um, romantic endeavors and love and romance. So when I start out, I oh, I have rose colored glasses in every single partner that I ever have. Right. Because that's where Neptune lies 
in my chart and it's in Scorpio so it's usually I mean usually I start out relationships very sexual based because Neptune is in Scorpio so for me I get this this incredible energetic connection sexually with romantic partners and I I feel I feel like an uh, like a soul transformation like we unite somehow through that and it's very romanticized and it's very embellished in my head and it's very intense and deep and very psychological for me to bond with somebody like that and but that is also where I lose my power because I am often I often don't get to know the person before I do these things. I am so caught up in this, this psychic connection of souls and this deep, intense lovemaking. And then I've got my Mars and Leo. So you see how these play together. There's just, you got to know where you fall. And for me, I know where I do. So now if I were to ever have a relationship, which I don't know if I will. It will be something where I put all of that, where my delusion lies, where I know my weak spot is. That is the absolute last place that I let get, let control my, my awareness of the individual that I connect with. There are many other aspects, powerful aspects that I will utilize in my chart. So look and see where you fall. Look and see where your Neptune is. You can get a free natal chart through www.cafeastrology.com or astro www.astro.com. Um, and it is just such a beautiful thing to know because we got to we have to see where where we are almost naive it is where we're so pure that we we don't see things the way that others see them um there are no limits where you have Neptune. No, no limits whatsoever. No, no earthly boundaries. It is a dreamy energy. And it's where everything is untangible. It's all in the mind. It's in your psychological awareness. It is where you are working in your highest vibration. This is not Wherever Neptune in does not mean that it is negative. It just means that it is a place where you can rose over things. So at this point, many of you, wherever Neptune is, it's you're having an awakening. The rose-colored glasses have been taken off, and you are all of a sudden getting an aha moment to beat all aha moments. It is where we tend to go outside of our mind and go into the spiritual plane that is why when i connect with somebody especially romantically and sexually it is it is a connection it's it's just a union of souls it's like i unlock and i taste the essence of them that is personally for me that is the way that i have come to be awakened in where i fall where Neptune is, and it is also where I have to surrender my ego. I have to find a way to connect with Neptune in Scorpio in my fifth house. It is where I have to expand that area and look at that unconscious awareness and step and develop definite routines and, you know, dive into my psychology and really, really, really expand my awareness so that I don't wear my rose colored glasses. Because remember, Neptune in Pisces is in retrograde. No more rose colored glasses. No more seeking power in the illusion and delusion of that area. Then you have your moon in Pisces three times stronger than it ever has been conjunct with this area. So please take the time and figure out where Neptune is in your chart and know that that's what's going to be three times expanded at this point, right? 
You're going to have an emotional awakening. You're going to have an awareness. You're going to have energies that are here that want to be here. So Jupiter right now may tug you in opposition, but that's only to make you see where your delusion lies if you have not been awakened. If you've been awakened, I have, and I have been really diving deep into where I fall and into this psychological um, part of me, then you get to take the energies that are here and go here and develop some really, really healthy routines, three times stronger, three times more supported, right? And if you fall there, then you just need to have some skills. You need to have some protection. You need to have some psychological awareness of where you fall. And you are going to be supported in finding those revenues through counseling, through psychological healing, through, through awareness, through um, educating yourself on a higher level than you ever have been. It, it really, it's really beautiful. Yes, there are two ways this can go. Yes, for some of you who are just being awakened, this is like, oh my God, what the hell just happened to my life? So some of you today are going to probably struggle with um, the Venus and Leo in retrograde, Mars and Leo, and it's going to be Quinn Kunxing, Pluto and Capricorn. Now, this is a dualistic day, so we're talking about two totally different energies, as we always do when we talk about <laughs> um, any dual energy. And we've had a lot of dual energy because, and we all, we will for quite some time, because we have primary, big, huge, expansive energies in dualistic energies. So. For some of you, you, the way that you are going to be awakened is by having something completely rip down your personal power, completely take it down to the lowest level. For some of you, um, Venus and Leo and Mars and Leo are going to quincunx Pluto and Capricorn. When this happens, um, you are going to find that your personal power is going to take a blow today. And this has something to do with your heart, with your romantic affairs, with your children or your childlike energy, with your um, past relationships. Something may hit you out of the blue that may cause you to lose your personal power, want to resort to wherever Neptune is in, but the, your, the energies won't support the delusion. And so you will, you're will you almost going to hit this like clash of the titans, this ending, this, this ending of delusion and this awakening. It is a very, very powerful aspect, guys. And this is about making the unconscious conscious for some of you. Some of you have no idea where you lose your power yet. You have been, you've just been experiencing um, losing your power and an ego death, but you have no freaking clue because there is so much delusion. And even though there has been so much supportive energy trying to break down and break where you, you lose consciousness, um, and is pointing you in the directions of your weaknesses, of your fears, of where your lower vibrations lie. Some of you have been hiding from that and coping through poor coping methods and through addiction. So many of you are still hiding in these, these areas that this moon is going to expand three times more than it normally does. And this is going to hit you in the emotional um, aspects. And of, of course, for us to change, we have to have enough pain associated with something to want to change it, which means that we have to, we have to endure emotional impact for us to understand where we fall. Some of us, 
Look, that is probably the lowest vibration of this, but I am feeling very deeply that for many of us that are not suffering from the need to be awakened yet because we've been hiding in our poor coping methods and in delusion still, for those of you, you sweeties, that are just going through this, I want you to hear me. Don't lash out. Don't find a way to seek immediate gratification. Don't fall into south node wiring. Just allow the awakening to happen and stop trying to control how you're being awakened. It, it won't work. This timing is just, it's not supported. And so we always want to stay in the highest vibration of the energies that are being supported. So let's talk about all the amazing energy that we have that's supporting us. So Mars and Leo and Venus and Leo are conjunct. They're about couple degrees apart and it is training Uranus. So for some of you that are trying to fight the energy, you're going to have some ego-based reactions and you're going to fall back. You're going to fall back on old people that support negative ways that you are. You're going to fall back on what's always worked for you. And you know, you're going to try, try to try this whole damn thing out. And yeah, Energy actually is there, so you can actually get away with this. You can. During this full moon, you can probably not, you can probably get away with making this a humdrum, escaping out, doing drugs, alcohol, partying, uh, sleeping around, eating a whole lot, and you can avoid. And believe me, there's a lot of energy right now in avoiding because all of this Pisces energy that's what happens. I think in the long run, the fallout after the full moon and then for the next four weeks after, you're going to fall into the lot of the lower vibrations. But if these, if this energy and this emotional impact three times more powerful scares you and makes you psychologically want to withdraw, then a lot of you are going to try it out and fall backward. Absolutely. But for those of you that are into seeking empowerment and getting your personal power back and setting up healthy routines, I can't even tell you that we have a lovely and absolutely gorgeous aspect to talk about. And that is the sun and Jupiter. And um, they're both in Virgo. And then Neptune and the moon, both in Pisces, are going to trine Pluto and Capricorn. Thank God that... Pluto right now is, as we're diving into our psychological awareness, and we are expanding our personal power and positive coping methods. We're setting up healthy routines. All of this is going to be supported three times more powerfully than any other full moon. I mean, I wish you guys could just really wrap your head around that. Because if you can, then you are going to experience a gorgeous sextile. Now, now, now again, you can try and all that out. And you can just make this, this moon very loving and very emotional. And, and it can bring you closer to the ones you love. And it is all heart. It's all soul. It is, you know, connecting. It is very dreamy. So you can try it all out and get lost in a dream world. Absolutely. Or you could sextile it. You could take the Neptune in Pisces and the moon in Pisces, both conjunct within a couple degrees of each other, and you can sextile with Pluto and Capricorn, and you can make progression. Solid, psychological progression. You can unlock your spiritual potential. You can, you can hone in on where there are no limits, no psychological limitations anymore. You can take off some of the shackles that have, you have been bound to psychologically and you can experience an awakening and it can fill you up and it can generate some really positive, um, absolutely liberating um, 
expectations for yourself and where you want your psychological processes to go. So no longer are you bound to like these predisposed psychological fears and um, psychosis in your mind and where you where you fall in your ego. You're no longer bound there. If you really want to, if you tap into this, this textile, which I'm going to encourage you to do, you can try this out. And that's that's OK. But I really want you to a full moon can um, it does suggests that there is going to be an ending. It could be an ending to psychological suffering. Do you get that? Like, that is huge for somebody like me who has psychological wounds that are immense and deep from childhood. And I have Saturn in my 12th house. And I really feel the psychological suffering of others. And so many suffer. And we don't have to anymore. When the universe is going in, it's making Neptune and Pisces in retrograde. It's taking off our rose-colored glasses. It's asking us to face where we fall. It's asking us to expand our, our spiritual potential, unlock our unconscious mind, and use the power of unconscious Energy, where energy is the most pure. Our unconscious mind is where potential lies. It's where pure light lies. It's where the purest forms of energy, creativity, um, psychological awareness, and psychological strength lies. Imagine if you were a person that was so psychologically strong that no matter what hit you, you could categorize it in to energy and no high vibration and low vibration of energy and you could t always know how to tap into the energy source at an, any given time to get the best out of an energy source imagine if you could have that kind of power psychologically at your fingertips at all times that is what we're talking about right now that is the kind of awareness that we could possibly start tapping into, learn how to hone in like at all times, and then always stay in the high vibration of energy. We would never sink. We would never suffer. Psycholog yes, things bad things would happen to us, but we would know how to see the potential in that bad thing and to really tap into the highest vibration of that energy and get the most out of everything we go to. Imagine a world that we lived in if everybody did that. Do you know there would be no death and killing people and anger and ego-based issues and narcissism and suffering? There wouldn't be that because we would understand that there's a higher purpose for all of those things and that we needed to be thankful. And that those karmic relationships that came to us were teachers and we were blessed to know them and blessed to experience that karmic lesson. Imagine if you could have that kind of rationale to every emotional issue that you had and we didn't fall back on fear anymore. We didn't fall back on oppressive ways, escaping our pain and our suffering, putting band-aids on it, temporary band-aids on it for us only to feel those energies again and again and again once we became aware and once we became conscious of where we fall and fear. If you are really into this kind of stuff, like I am obsessed with right now, um, then Jupiter and the sun are both in Virgo within a couple degrees of each other, right? They are going to um, sextile the first house in Scorpio at the moment, at the 0.0, .0 degree mark when the super moon just lights its power and it really evokes, like, if you could, I'm going to tell you what time the moon goes is is um full and it's a super moon when it says 0, 0.0 degrees because that is the infant that is where the seed lies right the seed of all this energy lies is at that 0, 0.0 degree mark so we want to plant the seed right when that seed is just mm, so delish right so we plant it in the ground it's an ooh it's just so supported in all this fertile sextile soil right now and so 
That happened at 11.35 a.m. Pacific time. So if you were to meditate or to really find a way to be unconscious at that time, and if you were to ask the universe for clarity and psychological healing at that time, and if you were really to sit down and meditate at that moment and let that seed just suck into you and all that pure, like absolutely white light just go straight down from your head, go out throughout your entire body and go out your fingertips and let it shine out of you and let it heal. I'm talking from the very tips of your toes at the very top of your head to the very tips of your fingers. Let it do some psychological healing and really suck in that energy and let it plug you back in. This is talking about outwardly, what do we fear? How do we fear being known? How do we fear, what do we hide from people seeing? You know, like, say you're a person who likes to put on makeup and do their hair. Well, what do you like without that? That's, that can be, you can find a peace and a psychological healing in being revealed for who you really are. That person that you let everybody see. That's your first house. That's your ascendant. The way that you interact with others, that there's some healing in that. Are you reserved? Do you shy away from people? Um to keep protected, keep a coating of protection on, an armor, you know? Um, do you feel like you have to represent yourself as a person who is not authentic to get people to like you? That is the healing that can happen from today. That will be, Jupiter will go in and expand the need in that area. Yes, Initially, you could probably feel a little opposition, but that is just opposition allowing you to pour your, because we have to have our emotions go somewhere. There has to be a little bit of a pain for us to be associated to know where we need to focus. So if, if something happens to our ego and it has something to do with the way that we outwardly appear to others, then we know that, hey, that's where the psychological healing needs to happen. That's where we need to focus that sextile, which is in your first house. And we need to stop fear from allowing us to go out into the world, to interact, to put our best self out there, to become authentic, to match what we have inside with how we outwardly appear. That is the glorious sextile that we have today. And we can set up routines that can make that happen. We also have a lovely sextile with Saturn and Scorpio, again, in sextiling Mercury and Libra. So this is all about balance. This is all about how we think, getting our, our day-to-day routines in a more balanced perspective, what we feed our engine, what we feed our vessel, getting our vessel clean. Some of us could go through a great colon cleansing or a great cleansing where we're starting to put more fruits and vegetables and we're starting to think about things on that level that just keep us, our engine clean. It's like we're putting the best gas in our car, right? That's what we're starting to think about. You know, you don't want to sit there and put the cheapest gas gas in a gorgeous, um, you know, engine that needs, it. that's a very high performance engine. I mean, why would you do that? You know, it breaks down the integrity of that engine. So you really want to be putting the best gas that you can in your vessel right now, because we're talking about keeping your energy levels. Are you sleepy? Are you super sleepy right now? And you're just... Your energy levels are low. You you find that you just need, I don't know, you just want to be unconscious more. Good. That is Neptune and Pisces trying to psychologically feed you from the inside out. Sleep more. You know what? This could be a moon where you just sleep through it because lots of information is going to come into you when you are asleep. When you are unconscious, this is a great time to spend as much time as you can, not on drugs, not that kind of unconscious, not in delusion, not in fear and hiding from it. It is a time for you to really hydrate yourself, 
Give yourself a really good meal, cleanse your vessel, and then go to sleep. And I want you to really tune in to these words that we're going to do a little, we're going to do a little exercise of how to meditate and how to find the highest power before you become unconscious so that you can get the most out of all of this gorgeous psychological moon. The words I want you to think about is spiritual potential. And I want you to suck it in and I want you just to think about what it would be like to be so enlightened that you are reaching your absolute maximum potential. Think about what you dream of, what you could manifest. If you could just have anything you want in the world, just think about your dreaming. Surrender your ego. Don't think about ego. Don't define yourself by what earthly um, definitions people put on human beings. Think about being out in nature and how you feel when nobody's looking. Get to that place. And remove your ego. You're thinking about um, becoming highly intuitive, just sitting there and feeling the vibration of energy, feeling what your body feels. What does your body feel during this moon? Is there a lot of anxiety? Is there a lot of fluttering? Is there a lot of stuff buzzing around in your stomach? And, you know, are you more anxious than normal? Good. That's spirit talking, sweetie. That's all it is. It's just the spirit talking to you. So if it, if you feel out of your skin and out of place, that's ascension symptoms, and those are good. Those are good. Breathe them in. Don't let them control you. This isn't about letting you become fearful of these things. Let this stuff seep into you. And at first, when you start sucking in new energy like this, we don't know how to hone it and register it. We don't know how to where it goes and how to define it and how to direct it. So we have experienced ascension symptoms. They're called ascension symptoms because we don't know what they mean. I know one time I was sitting here and I was just anxiety. I had anxiety for no reason. I knew it wasn't connected to a person. I didn't know what it meant. I I honestly freaking, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I was getting more and more anxious because I couldn't let go of something bad was going to happen. Something really, really bad was going to happen. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew it wasn't connected to a person and it wasn't the normal psychological suffering that I feel of others. When the energies are really high in the universe, I can kind of feel others lost. And that really can overwhelm me at times when I can't shut it off because there's so much negativity in the universe. There's lots of quincunxes and squares and, and I'm not feeling a whole lot of sextiles. And so I really sometimes feel that exponentially but this was like it was anything like I'd ever had and there were some kids playing outside and all of a sudden the wind kicked up right where the kids were playing a tree fell over right outside my window and I sat there and I was like okay that just spooked me out and it really scared me and it I don't know I don't know why I let it scare me it was a predictive type of I had a psych- I had a, a psychic connection with the energy, a predictive, but I didn't know what it was. And so at first, when I first felt it, it scared me. And then after I understood that it was a power, it scared me even more. And so I think some of us are feeling those types of stuff in us. We don't know what this, these all mean, these flutters and these, these, these instincts and these intuitive responsives to vibrations and energy. We don't know what all this means. We're trying to figure it out. So immediately that makes us want to hide and take medication or it makes us want to retreat and run away from it or it makes us want to psychologically check out from it. But I'm assuring you that you can't get away from it. At some point, if you're being awakened, this is par, this is par for the course. It's got to get worse. We just need to learn that there's a process with all of this. You know, your 10th house, your career life path destiny is really being focused on by Uranus. This is about 
Rem this is about selecting you as an individual, not as a collective person, not as a collective person out there being told what to do. You're finding your unique purpose in life right now. Your ego is being defined uniquely. So I think what might be freaking some of us out is that a whole, we want to be collectively accepted. We Being unique is scary and it's very unsettling and so like that poor gentleman that I was talking about earlier, that he's all he could see was the color of his skin and that he was unique in a white world and he was black. And so he lashed out and he and he chose the lower vibration of that energy and he did something super terrible with it. Instead of embracing the fact that he is unique and he's got a beautiful skin and it's a different color and he's a different race and he is he may be living in a white world and trying to ascend in a white world, but it is wonderful that he's doing that. He is leading by example. He's a leader. You know, following along mass hysteria doesn't make you unique. It doesn't make you um, authentic and different. It just makes you very typical in this world. And we want to stand out. We want to be a rebel. We want to rebel against stereotyping and against against everything that everybody says you know what if you are intuitive and psychic and energetically connected then stand up don't let people take you down stand up and fight there was a wonderful there's a wonderful lady that I happened to utilize and you know she had somebody who attacked her gift and said she didn't have a gift and that you know, she needed to stop doing her gift and she's trying, you know, when you're trying to figure out your gift, you know, if somebody is in a darker energy and you're in the light, th those energies don't mix right now because the ego is dying. And so people who are being ego based aren't understanding the spiritual connection. And that's OK, because we don't have to be accepted by everybody else. We're being liberated from the unconsciousness through this Uranus and Aries um that's the highest vibration. That's the highest form of the vibration in this Uranian energy. We're trying to find a way that we stand out. We're trying to understand just how unique we are. Ego is going to die to do that because we're connected to old ego and past and predisposed wiring. And that's not who we are. Enjoy this gorgeous, very psychological, very awake you know, just wonderfully awakening experience. And don't check out during this moon. Don't let it get to you. And don't let it freak you out that you are in some way losing your mind, losing your psychological faculties. You are, if you are aware of where you fall, it only means that you are aware of where you can rise. Be stronger, get back up, conquer. Think of it in a different way than you are right now and you will get the highest vibration out of this glorious, absolutely stunning Pisces full moon. Thank you so much for watching Annette's Astrology Corner and I will talk to you guys again tomorrow.